Hello, I'm Joseph, and I'm going to be talking about Swole and HTMX paired together, married in a way that's actually useful. And while I could use like things like Laravel, or there's even a framework uh, for Swole already that already exists, I just wanted to hand roll myself and throw myself into a bit of a pit of pain. Um, and this is what I've come out learning. Um, first off, Swole is incredibly performant, but a big but is that I'm having a lot of issues with databases. Uh, <laughs> And that's because um, I don't know the quite correct way to be doing this. And um, along with that, HTMX has been very, very cool. I've had to work a little bit with uh, how I can get this to um, correctly hydrate or just like return a partial response and not the full layout again. I'm, I'm going to go over that in a little bit. But basically, this is what I have. I have a home register account, which is behind middleware that checks for the user authentication token. Um, and then I have an about page. And HTMX lets you do like a spa experience. So I can, I can actually go back. I can actually go back. I go forward too. Back and forward, back and forward, wherever I want to go. Um, and that's because when you define the, um, I guess, uh, behavior is like htmx push url equals true and then you tell it the content id that you're going to push it to so content and it's just very simple now on the back end it does do requests and then you can see the re the, 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 the like raw html gets generated but you can see that it's not a full page it's just a partial page um i made this happen from just a little hand rolled framework um that i did today so if i go ahead Let's see here, uh, go here and I go to server. This is it, a whole 80 lines of code. Now there's obviously a lot more lines of code behind this because like I'm using a router um, from fast route and I'm also uh, using twig. Um, but beyond that, that's it. And then I have like my little middleware group with a try catch and uh, if something happens in middleware, then it'll try to catch it and throw 500 error, that type of thing. Um, if, it, if it's fine, it takes the context of the, the middleware that's being generated. So for example, if I go to my source here, go to middleware and go to auth, uh, my user ID is passed into the context based off the JSON web token inside the cookie of auth token. Now, obviously I'm not using PHP sessions. I'm not using any sessions at all, other than what's embedded in the JSON web token here. And um, cookies are not always the best thing, but in terms of this here, it's super simple. There's no point to have it really complicated. And so that all I do with, with my routes as I specify some middleware here, and then in that server code, I look up to see if middleware is present. And if it is, um, or if it's not, I just return to handle or if not, or if it is, then I go ahead and go through the, um, this thing here, which just goes through the array of middlewares. And then at the very end, I have my handler trigger if the, if there's, if it's still like moving forward. So it'll stop if the null is returned from in one of these middlewares and then the middleware itself should be handling, um, like if it's unauthorized or something like that. So that's what I have here. Pretty simple. And then how do I kind of cut off the like main layout versus the content? Um, I'm going to show you my about page real quick. It's really simple. So this is the about page request handler, I guess. I, I'm not even sure what to call it. It's not really a controller. It's just a function. By the way, in PHP functions are glorious, but they are hampered by the fact that you can't get autoloaders to work with them. You can use the, like the use, use function thing here. Um, but it, it doesn't know where to pull it from, even though, uh, I, I'm, I'm just baffled as to why this is still an issue after so many years now. Um, so in Composer, you you have to manually put in the files and it'll load all of these files all at once, which I guess is fine for performance, but still pain in the butt because, um, and then even the editors have problems with it. So for example, I can't jump to this function. It doesn't, it doesn't know how to, how to actually jump to it. So it's a little, you know, sad face moment right there, but incredibly just dumb function and I pass it in as the route and um, I, I use use twig use twig just static twig as this as like singleton pattern really simple and um, then I just load up the about page and render it and then how do I know to cut off the content if it's a request or not well in use layout um, it checks for is HX and if it is then go ahead and pull the full layout and pass in the context plus the, uh, the the HTML that was already there based off the content of the layout. Or if you're gonna have like multiple bits of the, the fill-in, then you would have like multiple bits here, but you would change the use layout or whatever you want. Then there's the database side of things. This is where I had the most problems. 
So one thing I did first was I just created an initialized the database using the Swole co coroutine Postgres thing is built in now to Swole. Um, I didn't understand this part because I'm like, oh, I'll just make make it. It's fine. Uh, I use the static uh, database thing here, not as polls, but as like a DB. And uh, as soon as I had more than one concurrent request, this thing died. I couldn't even finish a single request. And that's because every query that I did needed um, a new connection. It, it's very much like how MySQL works, MySQL I. You can't have more than one query running on a single connection. So I had to make it a poll. But then even then, um, if I have more than 10 requests coming in or whatever the poll size I was going to set, it, it, it doesn't work. And so I was like, okay, well, I have to create more pools as I'm working. I should probably have some limit of, of the pool. But basically, if I run out of pool of connections to get from, um, I just call use DB again. So pretty straightforward. I have to do some unloading of connections on here at some point, but it's not really like a, a super usable state, but it's, it's usable enough in terms of trying to get it to, to do that. And then like my validation page or my register page is quite long. Uh, I should be splitting this up into the own functions, but this is my post. Not that big. I mean, it's not that, that, that you know, that big of a, a problem. Um, the only gotcha here was user ID. This was what you're seeing down here where um, even after it was validated correctly, it tries to insert it, uh, it doesn't work. And then for some of these things, for so for example, my uh, my validate function had to be wrapped into a, uh, a coroutine to go ahead and um, execute the database, because if not, it would die over uh, and it would get stuck. I had problems where I couldn't even get the prepare statement to prepare at all. Uh, so this, this helps it. You set up a channel, set up go. And then you, inside of here, you can run whatever database things you want. Um, technically I should probably st step this out and have like async validate versus validate kind of get the idea. Cause I, I did that for my user thing here where I have my async user thing, where it just calls my user create, which is asynchronous request, a synchronous request, not asynchronous. Um, and then the uh, it pushes up the response of the channel and you kind of get that. And so obviously if I get back this and there's no user ID because it errors out. And this was another pain in the butt because normally I could look at the error ID of the, the statement or the database. The, the error ID was zero on both of these things. So I can't even tell if it was like a, a um, to, I'm drawing a blank here. The, the primary key error thing, the uh, the constraint, uh, was being hit. It, it, it doesn't even tell me that unless it's in a string. So like for my create account here, I actually look in here to look for duplicate key value, uh, in the error string. I don't, I, I don't like this, but the, for whatever reason, Postgres in the context of what I'm using here, just can't give me the error properly for whatever reason. But yeah, I do that. And then, uh, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. If I can get back to where I was at, and uh, create the you know, JSON web token, chuck into a cookie, and then send back a redirect with HX redirect, um, and telling the um, the HX HTMX to just go back to the homepage. Uh, although this should actually go to account, not homepage here. Um, now another thing I ran into is that when you're setting up Swole, it recommends like Docker and stuff like that, and it uses uh, a restart system that almost never worked for me. I do not know why, but it was it, like, if the server crashed, it couldn't even restart correctly from like a fatal error. Um, and so I actually swapped over to what is called, let me look over here, um, reflex. And so in my reflex, um, I, I override all their supervisor deed things and just turn it off. Cause it, it, it doesn't help me. I don't want it to run. Uh, and then I, I should be looking if this is ARM or AMD, uh, just, just wait for on a Mac, M1 Mac or M2 Mac, or, whatever, or the M processors, it can properly switch over, but you kind of get the idea. Um, and then I have a reflux um, script here. Where's it at? Drawing a blank. Uh, routes tests. Did I copy it in here? Eat. Oh, it's, a, it's not a script anymore. It's just a supervisor service. So um, reflux or reflex and then fancy for fancy output. This is why it's all colorized and then V for verbose S for, uh, I can't remember offhand, 
oh, service uh, R for the following command. So if you're using more than just PHP and Twig uh, or like PHTML or something like that, add it here, chuck it in, in, in that. And this is a server. Server.php is what server.php is here. So if that changes, you would change it here as well. That type of stuff. Really basic stuff. Really small, small, small framework. Using inside Docker is really nice. Uh, keeps things clean. And yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to say or go over. Now, um, do I recommend this? No. Uh, use Laravel. Use anything else. The This issue of, you know, the what ifs of performance and stuff like that, you're probably never going to run into. The only reason why I'm exploring this is I run this crap on like dirt cheap crappy servers and any ounce of performance I can get for my VPS, I will take. And this isn't so bad because I was, I was, I was using something I was coining as like Pogo flex was just go for the back end using gRPC and Postgres, um, Nux for the front end, um, and then flutter for the mobile app side of stuff. And that's where Pogo, uh, Pogo flux comes from. from. The problem with that is you're working between three different languages. You're typing out in all of those languages, TypeScript, Go, and Dart. And uh, I was just, you know, getting frustrated. As much as I like Go and how performant it is, um, I think I'll take a little bit of performance hit and, you know, drill down to a single language. And, it, it's, yeah, I could use Nux and and that, but I have some issues on my part with how Nitro and H3 and it's how it's coupled into um, Nux and just the amount of issues I keep having with the server responses of it not telling me what the issue is. And it gives me some like random ass Nitro command line thing. Um, it doesn't help. So anyways, that's it. If you guys have any um suggestions on what I'm doing wrong with the database and stuff like that. Uh, please let me know if you guys want any of this code, if you're interested, just let me know. Uh, it's, it's not really in a, like a usable state. I, I kind of need to add documentation at minimum. Uh, but yeah, it's at this point, it's just twig. It's fast router. It's uh finks for database migrations and, uh, and, uh, Swooly or swole, uh, for the, I guess, server part of it. And, uh, yeah, not, not really much else. Here's, here's my, uh, my list of includes, if that makes any sense to you guys.